Hey there, YouTubers. This is Don from True Cable coming back at you yet again, uh, this time with field termination plugs. Uh, these are Category 6A shielded field termination plugs. And let's open up the box and see what we got here. This is a two pack, and they do come in multiple pack sizes. We've got some nice fold out instructions here. And then inside the box, we have cut to fit strain relief boots that also lock the plug closed. So zip ties are not necessary with these particular uh, plugs. And then we've got the field termination plug itself. Now, this particular uh, type of connection is it basically, it's got a, it suffers from a personality disorder in a way. It's actually uh, terminates like a shielded keystone jack a toolless one in this case, uh, because you put the conductors into a holder cap and then flush cut and then put this in there and then close it. So it functions like a, uh, a keystone jack in the way you terminate it, but it ends up being an RJ45 plug. And in addition to all of that, you've got this cool uh, sliding uh, lock latch here, which allows you to remove the plug by pressing this plunger here. But you can also take this key off and then it helps prevent uh, with accidental disconnections and maybe even uh, tampering, if that's a concern that, uh, that you may have. So I say we go ahead and terminate one of these guys and uh, see how it all goes. All right, so we're gonna start with our pretty and pink cable here. This is our CAT6A uh, shielded plenum cable. It is uh, in, our, in our pink color. And uh, one of the first things you're gonna need to do before you even strip it, is you're gonna to need to put this strain relief boot on here, but it comes out of the box not quite big enough to fit on there. So you're gonna to need to snip off some sections of it. And the way you work with that is you just sort of gauge. I usually, I'll typically start small. So I'll, I'll work with this first right here, this first uh, segment and take that off. And you can see right here that it's been snipped off. And then I'll test fit it and see if that works. And it doesn't. That's okay. So now we go ahead and snip off the next one. And I bet that'll work. And there we go. So make sure this is on first because this is the uh, item that is going to allow you to lock the uh, jack or the field termination plug closed. So slide that down, get it out of the way. And the next step is to actually strip the cable. So you're gonna want to be sure that you put a good score on here, but not cut through it. So uh, adjust your blade all the way up on your cut and strip tool and put about uh, two and a half, three inches through there, and then lower the blade down so it makes good firm contact, and then turn a couple of times. And you should end up with a score. And there it is, and it's popping open but it didn't actually cut through the cable shield, and that's important. You don't want to cut through the cable shield because if you do, you might have nicked the conductor and you'll have to cut off and start over again. The next step is cut off the rip cord. I don't, I don't use it, but you want to remove it. And then the next step, there's a couple of ways of, of working with the cable shield. Uh, with field termination plugs, I prefer to, of course, keep the drain wire on there, but it's not critical that you keep the cable shield on there. So what I'll do usually is actually snip off the cable shield. Now I know the written instructions show you a different way, but, and there is a different way. You could actually fold the cable shield backwards, wrap the drain wire around it, and then snip off the excess here. But just to make it easier to work with in general, I just typically will go right ahead and remove the, uh, the cable shield and just rely on the drain wire. That way you're dealing with a nice clean edge here. So take this drain wire now and fold it backwards and start wrapping it right around this cable jacket like so. Just like that. Maybe three eighths of an inch uh, back, no more than half an inch for sure, because the uh, spring for the grounding is going to be right about here inside of the field termination block. The next step is you've got this dielectric plastic wrap here. That's just uh, simply to add stability to your cable. You can go ahead and uh, snip that off too, remove it, it's junk. 
And then the next step after that is to put your conductors into a star pattern and take off the spline. Now, one thing I do caution against is cutting a spline straight across. Uh, what I will typically do is rest the clippers against the cable jacket edge and snip each. There's four wings on here to snip. So I'll just snip one wing at a time at a downward angle. The reason is that you want to get it as close as you can to the cable jacket. Twist, and it's gone. Fold your pairs back out like so. And now you get your jack out here, or I should say your field termination plug. That masquerades as a keystone jack, a toolless one. And then you take out the conductor holder cap. The conductor holder cap is coded for either T568A or B. The B sequence is the lower sequence on the sides. Actually, uh, it, the brown is going to be the same no matter which sequence you use. But in the case of B, it's the lower sequence on the left-hand side. And it's going to be um, always the left-hand side for the blue on both sequences. And for B, it's going to be green on the right-hand side. So I'm going to use the B sequence because I just prefer to use it. But set yourself up for success. So orient your conductors so that they lend themselves to going into this guy uh, easily. So we got green and blue. We want to work with those first. Always work with green and blue first. And they're going to go under this bar. So put them right on through. And then sort of hinge your cap like that. So now you got your your uh, orange and brown that'll be above the bar, and you got your green and blue that are below the bar. And the next step is make sure you're offset by about two inches, two eighths to three eighths of an inch from the back of the cap to the cable jacket. The reason being that if you put this uh, conductor holder cap and cable in this jack uh, housing here, and the cable goes any further than that metal right there, if it goes anywhere near that blue, okay, the cable jacket is going to cause so much pressure for this cap that it's actually gonna break your cap off. So that's something you should be aware of. But first, let's get to wiring up this cap. So on this, uh, on the B sequence, you got your solid wire, the solid green needs to go here and your striped green needs to go there. So we'll just untwist these conductors so that that can be uh, threaded in properly. This is where your cable jacket uh, piece that you took off comes in real handy. All right, so we're going to be right there with the green. If you need to use a credit card to push them in, that's okay. We are dealing with thick conductors here. Your fingernail will work too. And you can see that that last twist in the, uh, in the pair is right up to the point of termination. And that's good. Oftentimes you can't get it quite that tight, but that's okay. As long as it's not more than half an inch, then you're all right. But the moons have all lined up for me today, so literally, because it's lining up for me here, the solid blue goes here, and then your stripe blue will go here. Now these guys do have a propensity to pop out, and that's because um, the way the front of the uh, conductor holder is designed, they couldn't cut the horseshoes in here like you get on this side, on the sides, uh, you had to cut slots because there is not enough physical space in here for horseshoe shapes to hold those conductors down. So it's just simple slots and it's being held in by pressure. And that's just the way it goes. It's just how it's designed. And then work on the rear pair. So always work on the front pairs that are going through the blue and the green. Then I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rear pairs. I'm starting here with the brown. These guys are even tighter twisted, so this is where the cable jacket piece really comes in handy. All right, so it's gonna be solid and then stripe. So it's not quite lining up the way I want it to, so we have to go one more twist, and that's okay. It's not gonna be over the half inch max. Put the brown through, and then the, uh, the solid brown, then the stripe brown. And again, the distance from where this is seating to the last twist in the pair is not over half an inch. That's the spec. 
And then this orange pair is the tightest of them all. So this is one you really do have to use a piece of cable jacket on. If you're doing this all day long, you will not be happy because you're going to end up uh, abrading your fingers all day. So using these cable jacket pieces really comes in handy. All right, so we got that orange pair seated in there. And what I recommend you do next is confirm that all the pairs are still in the proper sequence or they're actually in the proper sequence to begin with. And they definitely are for the T568B sequence. The next step is I recommend that you straighten out the conductor cap to be in line with the cable jacket. Uh, this takes some of the stress off of the conductors up here especially because they do have a tendency, like I said, to pop out. So straighten it out so that's nice and straight. And then once it's nice and straight, you can go ahead and do your flush cutting. And flush cutting is a pretty simple task. All right, so they're all nice and flush cut. Everything is seated and ready to put into the jack. Now, when you go to put this into the jack, the cap only goes in one way and there's a notch on the front and you wanna mate that notch up with the blue tab at the front of the housing here. So you can actually kind of pre-seat it by pushing down a little bit. That'll help quite a bit. You can push it down and then start to close the cap. Now you're not gonna be able to get this cap closed uh, very easily, especially with these really thick conductors. So we're gonna make use of our true close tool, which I strongly recommend you uh, pick up. But the first thing you wanna do is remove this sliding latch. This sliding latch is removable for security reasons. And then take the true close pliers like so. And you're gonna use the inside steps. The outside steps are for our uh, keystone jacks and the inside steps are for our field turn plug. Do not put pressure on the very rear of the housing. And what I recommend you do is you actually place the pressure to close the cap right in the center of the field termination plug like so. Right basically at the true cable logo and then simply close it, latch your tool back up, and then now it's closed, but it's not gonna stay closed. So you take your strain relief boot, which is also your lock, and you're going to mate up the Wi-Fi signal here with the Wi-Fi signal on your boot and push it over the rear, and there it is all snapped closed and ready to go. At this point, uh, you can plug it directly into a piece of equipment uh, right away if you wish to, and you can put this away. And if you ever need to uh, disconnect this particular plug, just simply put the uh, sliding latch back on there and then you can slide it forward and push down on a tab. So if you have uh, you know, any uh, questions, please leave them in the comments below. If uh, you liked our video, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. Uh, we did enjoy showing you this uh, particular uh, doodad today. It's, it's one of the more interesting ones that we carry. And uh, happy networking.